Restless Chipotle. Today I want to show you the absolute easiest way to make meatballs ever in the universe. These are so life-changing. You will never buy a bag of frozen meatballs again. You can make a ton of them at a time and freeze them yourself and it only takes a few minutes to put them together and then a couple of hours in the slow cooker. So the actual hands-on time is completely minimal, all right? You're gonna love them. I swear you're gonna love them. So let's get started. All right, so what we have is um, four cups of marinara sauce, either homemade or your favorite kind. And um, I am doubling this recipe from what it is on the website. So normally I think the recipe says two cups. So everything, just keep in mind, is doubled. I'm not gonna give exact ingredients because, of, I mean, exact measurements because of that. But, um, so you're gonna need marinara sauce, your favorite kind, and, but you're not gonna need that till last. You're gonna need two eggs, breadcrumbs, onion powder, salt, pepper, and, and um, chipotle powder, which is, you can decide if you want that or not. You know that I like things to be just a tiny bit spicy, so I put chipotle powder in there. Right here, we have um, the grated Parmesan. Not the freshly grated Parmesan. This is the cheap stuff in the canister that's shelf stable. And we're gonna be using this along with our breadcrumbs as the, um, the filler to keep it held together and, and all of that. And then I have uh, ground beef that is super lean. This is 93.7, 93% lean, 7% fat. A lot of times you're gonna wanna get meat or ground beef that has more fat in it because it does have more flavor. But in this case, we are not gonna brown the meatballs ahead of time. We are gonna put them straight in the slow cooker and let them cook. And you don't want three inches of fat floating on top. So get the leanest ground beef that you can find or that you're comfortable with financially. Because the this stuff's you know a little more on the expensive side, but it will make a huge difference at the end. So this is one of those, one of those recipes you definitely don't wanna get like, uh, 80-20 or, or 85-15. You, you definitely want to stick with either 90-10 or higher. And like I said, this is, this is like 97-3. It's crazy. All right, so I've got these. I'm going to take them off of my tray so that I can start working with them. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the meat in the um, bowl because you're going to start out just like meatloaf and if you don't like getting your hands messy I don't know there's not a lot I can tell you about that um, you're going to mix up your ingredients here your onion powder and salt pepper and all of that and you're going to put it right on top then you're going to add your breadcrumbs and I used Italian breadcrumbs, you can use whatever you want. And your Parmesan cheese. So break up the lumps. All right, I'm gonna set that aside just a minute. I'm gonna take the eggs and um, I'm gonna beat them a little bit. You wouldn't really necessarily need to, but I just prefer it to make sure that it's all mixed in. I do not like streaks of egg white in anything. So I'm just gonna give that a quick stir, just get it all blended up. So you could actually, you could also put a little bit of garlic powder in there. Um, because I use the Italian breadcrumbs, there's really no need. All right, so the eggs go in. So everything is in there except for our marinara sauce. And we're just gonna blend it up. Yes, with your hands, I know it's gross, but it's kind of the way it gets done. And what you're doing is you wanna get as much of the breadcrumbs and cheese blended in evenly with the meat so that it's just not one thick, um, uh, <laughs> I lost my word, 
one thick, dense piece of meat. You want it to be tender and delicious and moist and all the things that meatballs should be, right? So we're just gonna do this for a while and, and you just squeeze it, add it in there. Um, you don't wanna pack your meatballs together too much or too hard when you're actually making the meatball. But right now, um, we are not making the meatballs. We're just getting the stuff blended in and doing cardio at the same time. Um, but the, so you don't have to worry too much about how much you mash it. Just, you know, mash it on in there and get it going. All mixed up good. You want the, uh, the seasoning and everything to be all the way through. And this actually, at this point, it feels kind of bready um, and a little drier than what you might be used to when you make meatballs. But keep in mind that they're gonna be slow cooked in a sauce. And so um, they have to be a little bit dry or they're gonna fall apart. And that's another reason you want all of that to be mixed in there. I think we got it though. Looks pretty good to me. Here's my slow cooker. And before I put any meatballs in, I'm gonna put in a layer of uh, the marinara sauce so that it's there and they don't stick. Now I'm gonna set this aside while I am forming the meatballs. So you just form meatballs, you know, you know how to do it. Just like Play-Doh, gently take evenly sized pieces of the mixture and together, Roll it in your hand gently until you've made meatballs and you want them to be roughly the same size. Um, like I said, it's a good idea to use a scale and measure them all out so that they're all evenly sized. But I don't feel like doing that today. I don't feel like taking the time. So it's another one of those, Mary says do it this way, but she really she tends to do it the other way. and. I know mine aren't all gonna be same size because I'm not measuring them out. However, so the thing about these is they cook for about six to eight hours on low. And um, when they're done, you can use them in spaghetti sauce, you can use them in meatball sandwiches. Oh my gosh, they're amazing in meatball sandwiches. Uh, you can use them over rice, <laughs> pretty much any way that you would use Italian meatballs you can use these, okay? You definitely don't want to use them in some kind of um, Swedish uh, Swedish meatball with mushroom gravy thing because they do have Italian seasoning in them and they do cook in uh, marinara sauce. So definitely, you know, keep that in mind when you're making these. Right now, I'm actually, the reason that I went ahead and decided to make these today was because I'm getting ready to go out of town um, to England for 10 days to see my new grandbaby. So excited. And um, I'm making dinners up for the kids. So I thought, well, as long as I'm making this, I might as well, uh, I might as well show you guys how it's done and so that you can do that yourself. Um, and lest you think that I am a ne neglectful parent and leaving my kids home alone. The youngest one is 16 and the oldest one is 24 that's living at home or nearly 24. So uh, I don't feel too, too bad about leaving them. They, they are very excited at the prospect of mom not being home and the house being quiet, I am sure. They're good kids. Uh, they're absolutely good. And we have pit bulls, which is my favorite breed. And, um, but not too many people want to mess with the house knowing that. So that's also something that makes me feel good. Anyway, you just continue to make the meatballs and um, I'm gonna stop chatting your ear off and uh, I'm gonna make the rest of, the, of these and then I'll be back. Okay, y'all, I'm making the last couple of meatballs right now and uh, I made a bunch of them as you can see. And you're really glad that you didn't hang around and wait for all of that because it's taken a while. Well, not like hours, but you know, a couple of minutes. And um, so finish up making the meatballs, just stack them, you know, in there as you make them, just loosely in there. And then all you're gonna do is take the marinara and pour it on top of the meatballs all over. 
And what I usually do is take some water and um, rinse, you know, maybe like a fourth of a cup and rinse this out and uh, add it in there. But you don't really need to. I just, I was raised by parents that lived through the depression. And so, um, you know, they, every last little thing. Anyway, so that's it. Um, the top's gonna go on there and I'm gonna set it for eight hours and um, then they'll be done. So y'all, the meatballs are done. They're covered in the sauce. Um, they're ready to have the cover put on the um, slow cooker. And in eight hours, we're gonna have some amazing meatballs. We can use them right away on spaghetti, sandwiches, whatever, over rice. Or what I like to do is let them cool and take them out and um, vacuum seal them in individual sized portions and then the kids can make their own, you know, with, um, I have four kids still at home. One is in college, in College Station, which is two hours away, hour and a half or something. Um, so he's not home very much. The other three, one is in college, two are in high school, one has a job, one is part of the um, the trainers for the for the sports, you know, for football and basketball and all of that. And my husband has odd hours, so what I I do like to have these in um, in you know ready to for the freezer, so I can keep them in the freezer in individual size servings, and then people can come in, they can grab them, they can microwave them. Um, make their own sandwiches or whatever, and I don't have to worry that uh, people aren't eating. I never thought that I would come to the point that I'm just not cooking that much, but here I am. Everybody has got such a crazy schedule that I really have to cook uh, meals that can be portioned out and frozen and then um, warmed up at the convenience of the person that's eating the meal. So. These are great for that. I think you're gonna love them. Okay, y'all, here are those meatballs. They're all done. They're perfect. They are absolutely perfect. They are all covered in sauce. They've soaked up some of the sauce. Absolutely delicious, and they smell so good. Um, these just went into the slow cooker um, raw, and they slow cooked for about about six hours, four to six to eight hours, depending on your slow cooker. Um, I would say six hours is a is a good number to shoot for. They'll definitely be done. Um, eight hours, if, you, if you're if you gonna do it for eight hours, like if you're gonna be away from home, then you are gonna wanna put maybe a little bit more liquid in there because um, it can dry out. All right, so here they are. They're all ready to be eaten. Um, frozen or whatever you want to do with them. They are so easy to make and they are so unbelievably delicious. It's it's impossible not to like these. They're so easy. Um, I like them with, to, I like to have them in the fridge. Hold this up so you guys can see it. I like to have them in the fridge for, uh, or in the freezer, for a quick meal over maybe rice or spaghetti or however you want to do it. But definitely, definitely great to have on hand. So good. Great meatball sandwiches. All right, guys. I love you. And I will talk to you later. Have a great day.